Welcome to my project for EDU 602. This is Marzano's 43 Elements, using volleyball coaching as the adaptation. Providing scales and rubrics is something done often in volleyball. Take a position-specific player, for example. We continually take stats throughout the year, and at the beginning of the season, I provide a scale showing how many kills are expected of a middle hitter per match. For example, I would say 0 to 3, 4 to 7, 8 to 11, or 12 or more. Each range then falls into a category, allowing them to see their level of proficiency in the skill. Tracking student progress is simply done by taking stats throughout the season. We review these at the beginning of every practice so the girls know what to work on for the next match. Volleyball players love celebrating success. Daily successes are celebrated with specific team cheers, and in addition to this, at the end of the season, players are provided with their stat totals, which are celebrated at the banquet. Formal assessments of the whole class are considered the games themselves. It's easy to assess the entire team, or class, based on our overall performance and whether we won or lost. Formal assessments of individual students is done during games as well. However, this typically is not based on win or lose, but instead by overall performance and stats taken during the game. Chucking content is something that is often done in sports. During my volleyball season, I chunk the skills needed in order to play. Volleyball is a very sequential sport. For example, you need to be able to pass the ball in order to serve. Therefore, I explain passing and conduct passing drills before going on to explain setting and hitting. This way, no one becomes overwhelmed and is able to focus on one skill at a time. In between chunking the content, I allow the girls to process the content they have learned through multiple drills. This way, they see how skills can develop in ways they will be using it in future matches. My players are then able to record and represent their content. For this example, it is passing the ball. And when we move on to the next phase, in order to set the ball, we have to have good passing techniques, which then allows them to showcase their passing skills. Using structured practice se sessions is an easy concept to apply to coaching volleyball because we have daily practices. New skills and old skills are developed with a very consistent and structured practice schedule. This is done through modeling by both me as the coach and by other players in guided practice and close monitoring. Examining similarities and differences is done after a match is complete. At this time, the team discusses what was done well and what needs to be improved for the next game. Players not only compare and contrast themselves to others, but also throughout the three different matches. As the coach, I typically use the constructed response comparisons, asking how their specific skill was different between game one and game two. For example, I ask how our team energy level compared between the two games. Examining errors and reasoning is done through reviewing game film. My players are able to watch themselves in a game and analyze their performance. This is a great opportunity to showcase positive points while also pointing out where errors were made. Engaging students in cognitively complex tasks is a strategy that I use often in coaching. When designing practice, I often ask my players what areas they think we need to focus on the most. While I have a number of drills that I could be using, I find that assigning them with a task of generating their own drills to work on fundamental skills often results in a better understanding of purpose and willingness to participate. In order to provide resources and guidance during these cognitively complex tasks, I give myself and other coaches as resources and guidance and make sure we are circulating throughout the planning process. I ultimately want the drills to be successful and for the girls to feel confident in what they are creating for the team. Lastly, the players generate and defend their claims to the entire team by showcasing the drill that they have developed. I provide backing as needed while the girls are formally presenting their claims to the entire team. I do not usually feel the need to interfere too much with this as they all want to succeed and get better as a team. I use previewing strategies with my players whenever I am introducing new complicated content. I try to pair new content with information with their prior knowledge. For example, I begin the season with left side hitting only and slowly transition over to right side hitting. This way the girls can use what they already know about hitting and apply it to the new skill. In order to highlight critical information, I often find myself repeating information important to my players. I have them do drills and activities that focus on the important info. With hitting, I have them work on their footwork over and over again before even introducing the arm movements. This way they see how critical it is to know the proper footwork. Reviewing content is something that is done often in volleyball. Even though passing is the first thing I teach, it doesn't mean I stop doing passing drills throughout the season. 
I'm constantly telling the players about the importance of fundamentals, and we go back to the early drills whenever needed. In order to revise knowledge, I often ask my players to reflect on the content that they have learned. This is typically done in a question and answer setting. I will ask my players what they learned during the drills and what skills they focused on. This is where they are able to explain anything they misunderstood and identify areas where they have a gap in their knowledge and understanding. For reflecting on learning, I use knowledge comparison strategy. I ask the players to compare their current level of understanding of the skill, like hitting right side, to their level of understanding with hitting left side. I typically have them show me using their hands from a scale of one to five. This is a quick exit slip so I can gauge their level of understanding. When I assign my volleyball players homework, I always try to ensure that it is purposeful and that there is a benefit to what they are doing. Typically, it is skills-based. For example, I have my setter do crunches while completing mini sets. This works on her core strength, but also her handwork, both being extremely beneficial to her position on the court. When coaching, I use elaborating on information to not only ensure understanding of new content and skills, but also to ensure understanding of how this helps in the big picture of the entire game. I typically will explain a drill to the girls and then ask them how or where this will help to develop their individual development in our team game as a whole. Finding ways to organize students to interact is pretty simple on a volleyball team. Not only is this a team sport that it's impossible to win without communicating, but it's also a smaller number of players which makes interacting easy. If I ever feel that communication is off among the team, I find drills or team bonding types of activities for us to complete. During practices in particular, it's important to notice and react when students are not engaged. Sometimes drills are position specific, so I always try to monitor overall engagement of all my players at this time. If needed, I will adjust the drill for a certain player so that they become more engaged and want to continue on. I use increasing response rates all the time with my players. Whenever I'm asking questions to the whole group, whether it's about game performance or a drill, I try to avoid having the same player answer over and over again. The strategy I use most for this is random names. This way the girls are alert for all questions and generate their answers in case they are called upon. Using physical movement is really easy to apply to my volleyball coaching because my players are constantly moving due to the nature of the sport. They are typically only sitting when watching film and reviewing a game. I always try to maintain a lively pace at practice. As a rule of thumb, I try not to let drills exceed 10 minutes. Typically, this segmented approach avoids burnout from my players and leaves them wanting to do the drill again, or often asking for more time. Demonstrating intensity and enthusiasm is simple for me as a coach. I'm passionate about the sport and teach my players how to perform at their best. I think my excitement at practices and games translates directly into their attitudes towards the team as well. At my more advanced levels of coaching, like my national team, I often introduce unusual information to my players that they are not used to. These girls play at a higher level and will typically need this information in college if they choose to play. Therefore, I try to bring in some guest speakers, typically coaches from surrounding national and college teams, so that they see the importance in what they're doing. I find that hearing the information from someone other than their coach helps my players to see the importance. Using friendly controversy is an easy strategy. As volleyball is competition-based, not only do we compete against other teams, but my players compete for their spots in playing time as well. I think that this style of competition makes my girls always want to perform at their best level. Using academic games reminds me that as the season goes on, practice can get dull. I try to find ways to make drills more fun by incorporating competition-based drills. This usually makes practice more enjoyable and fun for my players. Providing opportunities for students to talk about themselves is an easy strategy in volleyball. Not only do we encourage as much talking as possible on the court, but I'm also a big proponent of having my players do the after-game debriefing. Instead of hearing me say negative things about their performance, I always have my players reflect and state what they did well and what they need to improve upon for next time. I think motivating and inspiring students is probably the easiest of all the elements to compare to my coaching. I try to inspire my players every day and motivate them to become the best possible player they can be. One strategy I use often is goal setting. We have season goals, monthly goals, weekly goals, match and game goals, and daily practice goals. Establishing rules and procedures is typically done at the beginning of the season. It's important for a new team to understand how the team functions as a whole. This spans from daily practice procedures like running, warm-up, drills, etc. into travel expectations and so on. It's important that these are established early so everyone has the same expectations. 
Sometimes they need to be revisited, but often once rules are established, they are hard to break. Organizing the physical layout of the room reminds me how we choose to set up our gym. Typically, the varsity court is the nicest equipment of the three levels and at the furthest end of the gym, which avoids possible distractions. In addition, we hang individual headshot pictures of the girls and posters on the wall, which I think is a great way for them to feel acknowledged and important. To me, demonstrating with itness is showing constant awareness and being alert. This is extremely important on the volleyball court, as all players need to be ready at all times. One way I demonstrate with itness is by designing lineups that will work in our favor and avoid problems. Knowing who works well together and communicates best, I am able to be proactive and create the best possible solution for the entire team. It's very important to acknowledge adherence to rules and procedures on a volleyball team. In order for practice to begin, the girls need to have the net up, be changed, stretch, and run. This is explained early on and sometimes happens before I even get to the gym. I find that by thanking the people who put up the net day after day in front of the whole team demonstrates not only my appreciation, but also that I notice what is happening. Ultimately, my hope is that this motivates more girls to help. When acknowledging lack of adherence to rules and procedures, I try not to I try not I've tried to focus on not providing punishments, but instead trying to instill adherence in the future. For example, if I notice that the team is cleaning up and one person isn't helping, I might approach that player and tell them what I noticed. Then I might ask if they could take the lead in setting up tomorrow. This way they can see that I'm aware of their behavior, but also how they can improve. Using verbal and nonverbal behaviors that indicate affection for students is a little bit easier on a volleyball court. Not only are you close with players because of the amount of time spent, but you also get to know them in a different way. On a sports team, nicknames are common and often demonstrate a bond the two of you share. At daily practices, I make sure to spend time talking with each individual player. In addition to that, we do a lot of cheering and high fives to indicate positivity. Understanding student backgrounds and interests is extremely important when coaching volleyball. Not only does knowing their background provide insight into their previous playing level, but it also showcases how much knowledge they have and how much instruction is still needed. Personality-wise, this is important too. Each player is different and the amount of attention, both positive and negative, can affect players in dramatically different ways. Displaying objectivity and control is very important when coaching. It's easy to constantly point out the negatives to the whole team and individual players. However, it is just as important to be positive and highlight what the girls are doing well. A necessary strategy is for the coach to be reflective and think about what they have said and how often in order to ensure that they are giving the players positive energy as well. For demonstrating value and respect for reluctant learners in regards to volleyball, I think it's important to point out that the reluctant learners are most likely the players who do not get a lot of playing time. One thing I try to do to show them that they are valued just as much as the other players is to not provide any special treatment towards the others. I think showing all players how much they matter and treating them all as if they are the star players works to the advantage of any coach. Asking in-depth questions of reluctant learners can be done by showing these players the important role that they play on our team. While they may not be the ones with the highest stats, I try to show them the other ways in which they help our team. For example, the bench plays a prominent role in calling balls in or out and encouraging their teammates. By providing praise and encouragement to do those things, the reluctant learners stay focused. Probing incorrect answers with reluctant learners relates to coaching volleyball when a reluctant learner is shut down. It is easy to get discouraged when you are not receiving as much recognition or playing time as others. Therefore, what I do as a coach is show them that I recognize that their behavior or demeanor was off, but I do not punish them for it. Instead, I explain that I understand that this can be hard at times, but to keep working and to try to have it pay off the following year when it will be their turn to be the star.